Well, hi there. We're on the June 2012 exam, and uh, we're on page 10, and we're doing the uh, second half of page 10, starting at question 56. Question 56 uh, is a story. A toy rocket is launched twice into the air from level ground and returns to level ground. The rocket is first launched with initial speed V and an angle of 45 above the horizon. It is launched a second time with the same initial speed, but an angle of increase to 60 degrees above the horizontal. Describe how both the total horizontal distance the rocket travels and the time in the air are affected by increasing the launch angle. For two points, so they want you to talk about both the horizontal distance and time in the air. So this is a projectile problem. So let's play with it a little bit, do a little sketch of it. And I'm going to sketch it down here in the bottom on my answer sheet just because i got this extra room. So I've got X and Y. This is 0 degrees. This is 90 degrees. If I go with 45 degrees, uh, as it turns out, 45 degrees gives me my maximum range. The, the balance between a velocity and the x-axis um, and V in the Y axis gives me the amount of time times the vo uh, velocity in the X axis for the greatest range. If I were to launch it at 60 degrees, which is approaching 90 degrees, it would be in the air longer, but with a shorter uh, range because the velocity in the X axis is proportionately shorter. And so 60 degrees gives you more time in the air with less horizontal velocity. Let's read the question again. Toy rockets launched in the air to describe how both the total horizontal distance the rocket travels and the time in the air are affected by the increase in launch angle. So uh, let's see, how do we want to say this? Launching at 60 degrees gives more time in the air. Air. My handwriting, <laughs> kind of, but less, and you know, I would just write Vx, but uh, you might want to write velocity, horizontal velocity, horizontal velocity. Let's see if we answer the question. Uh, describe how both the horizontal distance, oh, horizontal distance, uh, horizontal velocity, therefore, less horizontal distance. Okay, don't forget to answer the question they ask. Okay, describe how both the total horizontal distance and the time in the air. So it's less horizontal distance, more time in the air. So here's the answer, more time in the air, less horizontal distance, that's the two points they're going to be looking for. All right, 58-59. Calculate the magnitude of the average gravitational force between the Earth and the Moon. <laughs> yeah, this is a practical problem. Yeah, I uh, gosh, I do this every day. All right, let's do this. All right, first of all, uh, what's the formula for gravitational force of attraction? And uh, so it's this thing here. Fg equals big G mm over r squared. So let's write that equation down force is equal to big G M1 M2 over R squared. Earth and the moon. Now, uh, interestingly enough, on my formula sheet, I've got all sorts of data. I happen to have the mass of the Earth. Somebody was asking me today, how would you find the mass of the Earth? And um, you would put it on a big, big scale, stand back and read it. No, that's not it. Kind of an interesting story on finding the mass of the Earth. You might want to look it up in your spare time. So the mass of the Earth, mass of one of the things, is 5.89, 5.98, times 10 to the 24 kilograms. All right, the mass of the moon. Uh, mass of the moon right there. M2 is uh, mass of the moon, 7.35. times 10 to the 22 kilograms. 
big G acceleration uh, due to gravity is based on this right there acceleration due to gravity uh, but the universal gravitational constant is big G and that's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newton meter squared per kilogram squared so I'm gonna write that down big G equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newton pencils meter squared per kilogram squared. And radius, the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Um, uh, mean distance, Earth to the Moon. It's a little bit closer sometimes, a little bit further other times, but that's the average. That's what mean means. Uh, that's going to be uh, 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters. 3.84 4 times 10 to the 8 meters. All right, and we're just looking for force, so we're just going to plug everything into that equation. And it's going to be ugly, but it's going to look like this. My force is equal to. And so let's see if I can plug in my units properly. All right, 1.98 times 10 to the 20. Newtons. Well, if I was concerned, I would go back and redo that math just to confirm that I hit all the buttons right. But uh, hey, I don't have all day. I'm going to finish this exam sometime. 